we're looking at the banks being in a, an okay spot at this stage. They have come through the turmoil, but things have changed for them going forward. Do you think we're ever going to get back to the, the previous returns that we saw from the banks in South Africa? Stephen, thanks, and thanks for having us on, on the show. Let me just go back to, to what we did uh, to give the listeners a, a brief understanding of, of what the analysis is. We took the big four banks, that's uh, the banks you've, you've mentioned, aggregated their data and, and results and, and looked at trends and industry trends. And one of those trends is what you've, you've mentioned is how will they return to, to their profitability. And I think banks have done well. We've seen uh, earnings up and headlines earnings up. But if you unpack that a little bit, you'll also see that a lot of that has been driven by a reduction in bad debts or impairment charge. So for, for listen out there, that's when the home loan or the car loan goes bad and they've got to take an impairment charge against that. That is reduced by 11 billion for the industry as a whole. That is a big driver for, for this increase in, in earnings. So what we then looked at is core earnings and core earnings as we define it is, is net interest income. So your margin income, your non-interest income, less your operating expenses. So before tax, and before other deductions. And that actually decreased by 2%, showing that the, the banks are, are finding it difficult from a revenue perspective. And I think that's the one driver that if you listen to all the result presentations from the bank, if you read their, their information, that is one area that they are really focusing on, and, and that is, is revenue growth. Then on the flip side is, is the efficiency ratios, which is driven by A, revenue, and, and secondly, cost. And, and unfortunately, given that revenue slowed, the, the efficiency ratios went, went down. And I think that is another area of, of focus for the banks is, is on, the, on the efficiency, trying to, to extract cost savings and to make sure that the IT systems deliver um, on the cost savings that they've been promised. Of course, there's only so many cost savings that they can implement. And of course, at one point, bad debts will start to bottom out. At yeah. what point do you think they're going to start growing the top line, as you mentioned, that which has been under pressure? No, I think there's a lot of focus by banks on, on the top line growth. And, and they're looking at new channels. They're looking, if you believe the stats in the market, there's 40 million um, cell phone or mobile phone users in, in the market. And that is a big channel that they, they're targeting. They're also targeting um, the lower income sector, the, the, the battle for, for market shares increasing in that sector, and that's an area of, of revenue growth. And then it's expansion into Africa. All the banks have said, or a number of them have said, that Latin Africa is, is a playing field that they are focusing on, and, and, and that will help bolster, bolster revenue growth. Well, of course, we know that consumers are starting to come back to the party, are starting to borrow more money. Hmm. Corporations, not so at this point. At what point in the banking cycle would you expect corporations to start going to banks and uh, borrowing money again? Stephen, I, I think it, it's, you need to look at the different banks and, and some, some grew their corporate um, loans and, and some didn't. So I think it, there is a mixed bag in, in, in the industry. I think corporations have been a little bit cautious in, in, in borrowing, and I think that that can only last for, for that long. As the consumer is, is leveraging a bit, and we see um, car sales, and it's reported yesterday, the car sales are still continuing to, to increase month on month. And I think that's an early sign of, of, of things to come. And I think that corporations will, will follow after that. Has this banking cycle been particularly tougher than previous banking cycles because of the financial sector crisis? I think it's been, it's been a very deep cycle for, for the banks. Um, the the non-performing loans and the impairment charges that they took, the reduction in revenue was, was particularly bad. They, they're all coming out of that cycle. I guess one, one needs to look forward, and I'm not an economist, but what does the, the future hold for, for banks and, and where, where will, will, will the economy go? And, and revenue will follow. I think you've aggregated their return on equity to about 14.9%. Uh, if you go back a couple of years, they were all sitting with ROEs in the mid-20s. Are we going to get back to those mid-20s, or do you think with the new challenges that the financial sector faces globally that we have a new normal for the banking sector? Stephen, I, I think you're right. Um, all the banks have reported that, that return on equities will be lower going forward. Clearly they're driving as much as they can, but if you look at the capital a capital levels, the capital adequacy levels as that's referred to in banking sector, you've got your tier one capital, which is predominantly core equity, has gone up, um, and, and total equity has gone up, and that drives return on equity. And, and why is that? Is banks are cautious in what's, what's the future holds. You've got all these regulations which you refer to, you've got Basel III coming, you've got Basel II and a half actually being implemented in, on 1 July. Um, you've got new Twin Peaks regulation that, that, that was been mentioned by, by, by the Minister of Finance in his recent budget speech. So I think banks are all looking at all of those, plus where's the economy going and saying we'll be cautious around our capital levels and that will impact um, ROEs. But Do you I, think they're I, being I too cautious? No, I think it's, it's the right. I think it's, it's globally banks have, 
have, have increased their capital levels and, and our banks have been known for being well capitalized and I don't think it's a time now to, to, to not be there. So new legislation like Basel III, you talked about Twin Peaks. Uh, are our banks prepared, prepared for all of this? Do you think it's just going to be a, a huge administrative burden on them going forward? Our banks were one of the first, our country was one of the first countries to adopt Basel II and we were very well prepared and, and did it very well. So you've got every reason to believe that we will, we will be well prepared for Basel III. Basel III brings unique challenges to, to our market. We don't have the, the depth of, of liquid assets that's required to meet some of those requirements. And our, our funding pool is, is skewed towards corporate funding rather than retail funding for the banks. And, and that has implications for the banks. But the banks, National Treasury, the Reserve Bank are working together in a working party to look at the best possible um, solution for South Africa. So I've got every reason to believe that they will be ready. Now as the cycle turns for the banks, the interest rate cycle also about to turn. Of course, interest rates are a double-edged sword for banks mm -hmm. because on the one hand it helps customers, on the other hand it also hits uh, margins, doesn't it? Yeah, so, so at the moment we are at a low in the interest rate cycle. As interest rates rise, um, Clearly their margin income will go up because of the endowment effect, um, they get more on, um, on, 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 on that side. However, then one needs to watch customers where customers will fall over again where they can't afford their, their loans that they've got from, from banks. What do you see as the biggest challenges for, for our big banks? I think it's revenue growth. Top line growth is on the agenda of every, of every banker and I guess it's, it's the efficiencies that, that, that needs to be driven as well from, from, from a bank side. And do you think they're still attractive to uh, potential foreign predators looking at South Africa? I think Africa as, 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 as a continent and South Africa clearly this gateway to, to Africa is very attractive to, to, to investors. The trade flows between Africa and other emerging markets and, and the East is very attractive. So I think that we will always be an attractive market.